Welcome to Deep Tech 315. Our first topic is one that's been uh, in the works for over a year, but uh, Deep Tech uh, Deepwater is launching an affiliate company, which is Intelligent Alpha. It's run by our very own Doug Clinton. Doug Clinton continues to be a partner at Deepwater and a very active role in everything that is Deepwater, but Intelligent Alpha, Doug, you want to just give the highest level uh, what we're doing with Intelligent Alpha? Intelligent Alpha is, at least I believe, the first asset manager built from the ground up to use current large language AI models to do all stock selection, do all portfolio creation. So you know, I've always kind of characterized this experiment of Intelligent Alpha that's now become a real company. It's kind of like the AI powered BlackRock. The goal is to build various different strategies. Uh, to serve all different kinds of investors from retail to RIA to institutions. And uh, we launched the company this week, which has been uh, very exciting. It has been exciting. And uh, I've got a question about kind of some of the philosophies of the company, but maybe just taking a step back about how this happened, Doug. You were experimenting with some of these LLMs with ChatGPT a year plus ago. And as we talked about it as a leadership team at Deepwater, we recognize that the future of investing is going to be a combination of uh, driven by humans making the decision. We believe that people will allocate the majority of their portfolio to that, but will also increasingly allocate part of their portfolios to having machines uh, do that, LLMs help manage that money. And maybe just to focus on that piece of it, what is the advantage for an investor to have your part of your money managed by an LLM? I think that LLMs over time can fix some of the flaws that exist in existing sort of investment paradigms. So today, I mean, really investing is you either index, you go passive, you just buy the S&P 500, or you go with an active manager, a human active manager. And I think that each case sort of has some imperfections to it that most would admit. On the indexing side, the indexes just aren't intelligent. They're not meant to be. You know, they don't understand. By definition, they're not. By de they can't be. Yeah, they don't understand the PE of a company. They don't know the difference between, you know, Apple and Alcoa. It doesn't care. It's just, you know, these stocks fit in a certain uh, strategy that the index has defined. And then they go and generally market cap weight, whatever's in that index. Intelligent alpha and using AI can add some intelligence to that basic structure that indexes have. On the active management side, the human side, you know, you, you read the great investors and it's funny, like most of the lessons that they talk about, it's not about how to do a DCF and, and all this other stuff about analyzing a company. So much of it is just about emotional management. You know, it's about not selling stocks when your portfolio is getting crushed and you don't believe in anything anymore. And it's not getting too euphoric when your portfolio is up a bunch and maybe you didn't deserve to be up a bunch. And I think the thing that AI does really well is it's not human. Obviously, it doesn't feel any of those emotions. It doesn't get under stress when its portfolio is underperforming. You know, and so I think that AI over the long run can certainly add some stability as it thinks about how to construct portfolios relative to sometimes humans that get the emotions. You mentioned the uh, AI of BlackRock, and as we were formulating uh, Intelligent Alpha internally. Uh, we talked a lot about what other people are doing around LLM or um, uh, ML and you know the, the concept of using artificial intelligence to help investment decisions has been around. You look at Renaissance, there's a lot of uh, quant funds that are super smart. And, and I think it's, it'd be helpful just to have everybody understand maybe the difference between what, what they're doing and uh, what we're doing here at Intelligent Alpha. Yeah, I kind of think of the world in uh, in two parts. You know, we split in basically fall of 2022 when ChatGPT was rolled out to the public. And I think everybody was all of a sudden aware of uh, the power of large language models, transformer models. Um, and so pre-2022, when we talk about machine-based investing, right? Most of it is built, in my opinion, on an approach to big data, and machine learning and just trying to find sort of signal in, in a lot of noise in many cases, and then making investment or trading decisions on that. And there's a lot of really great investment companies that do very well with that. Um, what I think is new now in this new paradigm, the post GPT world, 
is that we do have LLMs and where in the old world in machine learning, all you could do was look at quantitative data. You could just look at the numbers. In the new world, you can actually have the models build a sort of qualitative perspective about companies too. And so they can understand the numbers, they can understand price to earnings multiples and the trajectory of earnings and things like that. But they can also understand what Apple does as a company. They can understand why customers love Apple. And that to me is fundamentally different. That makes these models much closer to sort of a mix between you know, human and machine-based investing <laughs> versus the prior world where it was really just about machines and data. Yep. And yeah, the most basic of the way I think of it is uh, this is applying generative AI to actually having the machines make the decision versus using AI to help some analyst um, better quant and better understand something. Is that one way to think about it? It is. There'll be multiple ways that people use AI in the investment space. And again, like even just using the term AI is, is kind of nebulous because AI can incorporate right. traditional machine learning or it could be uh, generative AI. But in terms of generative AI, yes, I, I do expect, and I know there's companies already that have tools that sort of enhance human analysts. Those will certainly be more popular. But I think we're trying to go even a step further and say, yep. let's take the human out of the picture. Let's just give the power to the machine. And that's what Intelligent Alpha is all about. Uh, one easy box to check for victory here, at least an early victory, is first mover advantage to Intelligent Alpha. Thanks for all you're doing there. We're going to quickly hit another topic, which is related to Apple. And they're launching iPhone 16 today. I was uh, in line. I've been uh, since 2007. I've gone to every iPhone launch. I've surveyed people. Those lines have gotten smaller as more people pre-order online and do it uh, through the uh, through the internet. And in this case, there was 40 people who I surveyed. Turns out that the average life uh, or the average age of the iPhone that was being upgraded was 3.1 years. Uh, again, super small sample, but I think it was. I was expecting more of kind of the the fan, the Apple fan people to show up that had iPhone 15s and maybe an iPhone 14 and the average time was going to be like a year and a half, but it turned out to be 3.1 years. I think it's just representative that a lot of people are just upgrading this. And just to make an, another um, uh, thought related to some of the reviews early have been mixed, I would say. Uh, basically, there's not too much exciting about this, but of course, those reviews don't include Apple intelligence. And I think it's going to take six months to really get a grasp on what's going on. I believe that this is going to be a great cycle. I think it's going to comfortably exceed where the street is at for iPhone growth in fiscal 25 and 26. And Doug, I went, uh, I went from coast to coast on that one. I'm going to give you final word. I think that there's, a, there's certainly a lot of people that are probably due to upgrade their phones, uh, number one. So I think there's a good environment, even setting aside Apple intelligence. Yeah. And comps get easy becomes, too. Easy comps. Easy. So I think that the setup is actually really quite nice. And I think to your point about six months, that is going to be the question, right? Like, is Apple intelligence compelling enough to get another sort of kick beyond just having the easy comps? And I still am curious really about what does it look like kind of fall next year? Can the new and sort of incremental stuff that Apple adds to Apple intelligence, can that really kick uh, the, the upgrade cycle into overdrive and keep people excited? That to me is becoming the big question. I agree. I'm a believer as you are in the power of AI to do just that. We'll be keeping close eyes on it. On behalf of Deep Tech, that's Doug. I'm Gene. Bye for now.